The following program is brought to you in living color. Hi, and welcome to another edition of This Week in TV History. I'm Tony Figueroa, the Child of Television. You can read my blog, childoftelevision.blogspot.com, and you can hear me on TV Confidential, a radio talk show about television. And today, uh, we're going to have a milestone. It's a birthday, a 90th birthday for Gavin McLeod. He was born February 28, 1931. Yes, I am checking my notes. His name at birth was Alan George C., S-E-E. He took the name Gavin McLeod, uh, well, from two places. Uh, Gavin comes from a TV movie in the 1950s that he saw and was very moved by called Gavin. He liked that as the first name. McLeod actually was the last name of his favorite drama coach when he was studying drama up in Ithaca, New York. He, this was the person who uh, did so much for him, both in the classroom and out of the classroom, and he thought that that was a great name to have. And it has served him very, very well over the years. The one pattern I've noticed in his life, or at least in his earlier career, he was uh, doing a lot of World War II comedies. Now, there was the movie Operation Petticoat, which starred Cary Grant and Tony Curtis. It would later become a TV series on ABC in the 70s, around the same time as The Love Boat. One of the other stars on Operation Petticoat was Marion Ross, yes, Mrs. C, who would later become Captain Steubing's wife on the love boat. So he did Operation Petticoat, and then a little later on, he did McHale's Navy, where he played Happy Haynes. He was one of the crew of the PT-73. He has said on many occasions that he was not happy playing Happy because they didn't give him enough to do. He was at a point in his career where he had a wonderful resume and a lot of great work on a lot of theater uh, credits, uh, TV credits, movie credits, but they were giving him maybe two lines per episode. And there was a point where they wanted him to stand in a certain spot so you couldn't see something that was on the universal back lot. So he was there to block something from the camera's view. And he had had enough and, and tactfully negotiated a way out of his contract and, and left the show. He did the movie Sand Pebbles. And around the same time, he did multiple appearances on the show Hogan's Heroes, another World War II comedy. Uh, he did this, and uh, he got to come back again and again and again playing different characters. Most of the time, he was playing evil Nazi agents. Yes, an evil Nazi is redundant. But he was able to do the show, and he speaks very highly of it still to this day. He especially loved working, again, with the ensemble that you have Werner Klemperer, John Banner, Richard Goss, and Larry Hovitz, especially, he, he brings up a lot. And uh, he did the movie Kelly's Heroes, right after Hogan's Heroes, which starred Clint Eastwood and uh, also starred uh, Carol O'Connor and Donald Sutherland. So he was able to do that movie, and that kind of brought his uh, entry into the Mary Tyler Moore show. Now, he had worked technically with Mary Tyler Moore once before on the Dick Van Dyke show. He's not in any scenes with Mary, but he did play uh, Mel Cooley's cousin who sold jewelry. So he was Richard Deacon's cousin, very funny character. So he got to uh, work with that ensemble. Uh, if you look at anything on any of the nostalgia shows, where they're uh, channels, that's right, uh, Me TV, um, um, Antenna TV, Cozy TV, uh, TV Land. He did everything from Perry Mason to the Naked City, Hawaii Five-0. So he uh, played good guys. He played bad guys. He played likable guys and uh, very despicable guys. He, he covered the gamut. But uh, when he played uh, Murray Slaughter for the Mary Tyler Moore Show, he actually came to audition for the role of Lou Grant. They wanted him for Lou Grant. He left the audition saying, you know, I really like this Murray character. And when he got the call for the Mary Tyler Moore show, he said that he was told, yeah, you're going to be playing Murray, which made him very, very, very happy. He learned a lot from how Mary Tyler Moore ran that show as the lead, the person whose name was in the title. And he took those lessons when he became the captain of the love boat. He does talk about that, not just the final episode of the Mary Tyler Moore show, which was beautifully written and the circumstances to bring everything to the end were 
inspired, but also just the final season, knowing that it was for the end, it was very, very bittersweet. And you have to remember, he finished the Mary Tyler Moore show in 1977, in the spring of 1977, and he went right on to the love boat. Now, there is a little story of something in between. He was selected, or he was brought in to read the role of the captain. Now, there were two love boat TV movies beforehand. This was the third Love Boat TV movie, potential pilot for a TV series. When he played the captain, that's when the thing sold to a series. He did the pilot. He saw the potential in the pilot. He was actually told by his representatives, yeah, there's this thing they want you to read for. It's called The Love Boat. It's done by Aaron Spelling, and it sucks, but read it anyway. And he saw the potential in it. He saw that there was something there that could be uh, commercially successful. He especially was fond of, in the pilot that he did, that there was a character played by Phil Silvers who wanted to go to sea to die. So there was a heavy episode, kind of the screwball comedy, and then maybe a a more sophisticated storyline. So you usually have three different storylines playing out in the course of the episode. And he liked that, and he thought that there was a lot of potential. He did the pilot, and then he was told, if this sells... We will work around your schedule because we know you do a lot of theater. You do a lot of game shows. He heard it. He didn't believe it. He heard things like that before. And he went to do Annie Get Your Gun, Debbie Reynolds in San Francisco. Just before the show was ready to start, he got the call that the love boat was picked up and was told, we promised uh, your theater commitments will work within them. And he was very surprised that they actually made good on that promise. He is also very proud, proud of the fact that the love boat changed the cruise industry forever. Any of you who have ever, ever, ever taken a cruise, I am sure a lot of it is connected to the love boat because the cruise industry exploded with the success of this TV show. It was also an opportunity for him and the other actors to work with people they idolized because when the love boat began, there were people who were guest stars who were on current shows that were on any of the networks, but also there were a lot of people from the golden age of Hollywood. So we are talking about Ginger Rogers. We are talking about Ethel Merman, Della Reese, Cab Calloway, Van Johnson, Uh, There were a lot of people from that golden age and people that, especially Gavin McLeod, watched in movie theaters when he was younger, saw on the Broadway stage when he was younger and always wished that he could work with them and then had the opportunity to work with them. That show went on for a good long time and he is still very well known for that particular role. He has an autobiography out. Uh, It's been doing very well. It's called This Is Your Captain Speaking. And I also want to bring up a couple other points. He did a show on the Trinity Broadcasting Network, which I'm sure a lot of you know is TBN, the the religious station. He did the show. It was called Back on Course, and it was a show about marriage, and he did that for about 17 years. Uh, So he was very successful. He does uh, uh, talk a lot about his personal relationship with God. He is uh, considered a Christian activist. Uh, and he is very true to that. So if you see him on one of those shows, he uh, he does walk the walk and he does talk about every aspect of his life, uh, the good, bad, and, and, and some of the stuff that you know, I'm sure a lot of people would rather just keep secret. But he puts it all out there. He is a very honest person that way. Anyway, uh, like I said, he called Betty White a national treasure. I think he, uh, Gavin McLeod, is also somebody that should be uh, considered for that category. And Ed Asner, since I'm thinking about it. Uh, he played characters that we especially loved uh, that we're often a nostalgic for. And I'm thinking of Murray and, of course, Captain Steubing. I also want to plug another show while you are looking at this on YouTube. It is called Stars in the House. It is done out of New York. And it is done to raise money call for, for an organization called the Actors Fund. And uh, the Actors Fund is actually a fund put together. It's a little deceiving. Uh, the Actors Fund raises money for people who work in the entertainment industry, who especially now are on hard times because uh, the work has dried up. Uh, in the 
late 1800s, anybody who was employed in any theatrical capacity was classified as an actor. And when this organization started, when they were raising funds to help out people that worked in the theater, the generic term was actor for anybody who was employed on stage, backstage, in front of the house. So that's the origin of the name. So they are raising a lot of money to help a lot of people that work in theater on the East Coast and production on both coasts, uh, people that work in uh, theater venues, people that work as production uh, crew, uh, anybody that works within that realm, they are raising a lot of money for. And Stars in the House has been doing two shows a day since our lockdown. And uh, they have done a lot of great TV reunions. And I do want to talk about some of the other stuff that they uh, have done so far in future installments. But very recently, very recently, they did a Love Boat reunion that featured the entire original cast of the Love Boat. And all of them are telling stories about what it was like working in those productions and other aspects of their life. So if you're a fan of the Love Boat and a fan of Gavin McLeod, it is a wonderful interview. I know now we're in the days where somebody comes in, sits on the couch, I'm doing this movie, I'm doing the show, I wrote this book, and then they move on. So it's really great to have a much lengthier interview process. And of course, Stars in the House is raising a ton of money for the Actors Fund, which is a very worthy, worthy cause. So I want to wish Gavin McLeod a happy birthday, many happy returns. He is doing great for somebody who is just turning 90. I would love to hear more stories from him. Check out uh, the Archive of American Television. He did a lengthy interview for them as well if you want to know more about his life, his career. And with that happy note, I'm Tony Figueroa. Stay tuned.